Another of those unfamiliar things, perhaps, that we introduced when we talked about the postulates of quantum mechanics was operators. What are operators? Well, here I've written down three of the most important operators that we'll use in this course. One is position operator, momentum in the x direction, and angular momentum. Now things like position x, the operator there means just multiply by x. Okay, so things that are static like x, multiply by x. So any potential we might have, uh, say a 1 over uh, r potential, that means just the operator corresponding to that potential will be multiplied by 1 over r. Now there are things uh, for particles or systems that are undergoing motion, like a particle uh, that's uh, moving with some velocity, then these operators or quantum mechanics are much different. For instance here, this is a momentum operator, which we said was mass times velocity in um, classical mechanics. When you do it in, uh, this should be a hat over here, when we uh, translate that into quantum mechanics, it's this strange thing, minus i h bar first derivative with respect to x. So i is the square root of minus 1, h bar is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi, so I'll just write that over here, i is the square root of minus 1, h with a bar above there is Planck's constant divided by 2 pi, and this is just take the first derivative of whatever we're operating on, whatever function we're operating on, take the first derivative with respect to x, and that'll give us the x component of momentum. Well, who would have thunk that? But again, you know, you say, why, what the heck, what are we doing this for? Well, we're doing this because when we, when we make this assumption, we're able to explain experimental data that we cannot explain using classical mechanics. So essentially the uh, end justifies the means. And again, it's like postulates, this is what you have to accept. These are the tenets of faith in the church of quantum mechanics, so we got to go along with them. And the third important operator is angular momentum operator in the z direction. Uh, this should be uh, an operator here with a little hat above it, minus i h bar. And this is uh, for linear, and then when you actually transform into circular motion, you get this sort of cross product here. It has to do with the angular uh, momentum l, the vector, remember, is r cross momentum p. So this is, uh, the r is, just translates into multiply by r, but p, this has the motion term in it, that's where you get those partial derivatives. Okay, so there's some operators for quantum mechanics. Um, you know, you wouldn't think, uh, you know, you would <laughs> end up with a partial, der or first derivative or second derivative, but it's true. All right, so now we know something about the operators. How do you go from a description in classical mechanics to a description in quantum mechanics? Well, this is the procedure, the recipe for doing it. Here's the Hamiltonian, classical, which said was the sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. All you do is change the, op the um, Hamiltonian from classical into Hamiltonian for quantum mechanics by making it into an operator. So here you take the kinetic energy and translate that into a kinetic energy operator. And here you take the potential and you trans translate that into a potential operator. All right, so let's actually do that. Uh, classically, the kinetic energy is one-half mv squared, but remember momentum is uh, mass times velocity, so you can rewrite kinetic energy as the momentum squared divided by two times the mass. Okay, so we go back up here, so what do we have to put in? Well, we have to replace momentum here with the momentum operator, which is this. All right, so you just take the classical description, take the momentum and replace it with the operator and it's squared. When you square, that means take the second derivative instead of the first derivative. We have i times i, which is minus one. And so here is the kinetic energy operator we got by writing the classical expression and then making those substitutions for momentum. All right, let's look at potential. Potential is just a function of position. It's not, uh, doesn't depend upon motion. It's just a function of potential, uh, distance. So in that case, we go back up here. Uh, distance means, well, the distance operator, p 
position operator is just multiply by that. So if we have a potential energy, uh, which just contains, um, it doesn't contain any motion. If it can't contain motion, it would go in the kinetic energy. So potential energy just depends upon distance. And there's no special operator, uh, there's no su special substitutions. Anything that uh, appears as x, y, or z means multiply by x, y, or z. So we end up with this Hamil this expression h for uh, the operator corresponding to this classical uh, h here. Now this classical h, remember h, um, h was equal to k plus v and that's total energy from classical mechanics. So that this h quantum mechanics or uh, classically is total energy so this operator now corresponds to total energy so there's the recipe for taking uh, something in classical mechanics and turning it into an operator for quantum mechanics here's the important substitutions here in fact really it's just momentum you can get um, the angular momentum by doing cross p so these are the two biggies right here position multiply by x momentum multiply by minus i h bar and then take the first derivative. Huh. You wouldn't think that's the momentum operator, but it is. It is because when you use it, predict results that you measure experimentally.